talk about different types. <clears throat> so today we're talking about tolerances. So what's a tolerance? Yeah, are things ever made perfectly? No, right? They're, they're never made perfectly. And on our title blocks, there's always something like this where we have point x, point x, x, point x, x, x. And then the tolerance based on the, the units. And remember I talked about having to buy those zeros at the end? Because it's one decimal place, it's a tenth. Two decimal places, it's two hundredths. Three decimal places, it's five thousandths. So that's how much they can be. They can either be over or under or under by that amount. So if I'm on drawing it says 1.000. So the drawing says 1.000. It means the part can actually be between 1.005 and 0.995, right? That's plus five thousandths, that's minus five thousandths. So the part can be anywhere between that. That's our tolerance. Yeah, so they would come and look at the title block and see what that is. Or it's two decimal places, would look at, and it'd be two tenths, or two hundredths. It's one decimal place, it's a tenth. <coughs> and so anything that doesn't have a tolerance on it is using these tolerances. If you want to use something a specific tolerance for a dimension, then we have to put that on the dimension itself. <clears throat> and so with this, like here's two parts. And so right now they're shown at their, their smallest size. And then the, the gray is the tolerance. So that's how much space they can vary in size. And usually there'll be some space in between called the allowance or the minimum clearance. And so that'll make sure that they'll always fit together. Even when this part's its biggest and, and this hole's the smallest, they'll, they're still going to fit together. <coughs> so, we've already talked about that. So with, we have three basic types of, of numbers you might use. We all have a nominal size, which is kind of a general identification thing. So, um, So you guys, like, the hole's a half inch hole, but it's really not. It's kind of a little over, a little bit smaller, like that. Um, the basic size is the size the tolerance is applied to. So on that previous slide, the one inch, that's the basic size. That one inch is our perfect size, and the tolerance is applied to that. So what's the size? That's just the, so if... It, yeah, it's kind of the same thing, but um, um, you'll see it on some of the stuff we're talking about later. But the like, if it's actually um, so, if, like, if we use limit tolerances, we're talking about next. There is no basic size, but but they have nominal. We just call it the the the, the round number that's closest to it. Um, or um, like if the hole's a, a, a quarter inch, the shaft that's going to go into it is going to be has to be smaller, but we'll still call it a quarter inch shaft. So that and so that's the nominal size. That's not really the real size, but it's the size it corresponds with. <coughs> um, and the actual size is what? How they actually made it, right? So that's. What, what they actually did, and then the minimum clearance is the the, the space between them when in the worst case scenario. So when the hole is the smallest and the shaft is the biggest, and we usually use the terms hole and shaft because the hole's something that's going to go into. So in this case, we would call this the hole dimension, and that the shaft dimension, because the shaft is, is a is a thing that's going into and then that. Yeah, you get it right. All right. So we have a few different types of tolerances. We have limits tolerances, where we specify the smallest and biggest number. 
So we just did that. So we did 1.005.995. If we just put that on the drawing, that would be a limits tolerance. <clears throat> We're just giving them the, the range. And we don't really care where it is in between there. We're just, it's, it's there. A bilateral tolerance is we give it a one number and it's plus or minus the same amount. So that was our 1.000 plus or minus 0 0.005. So that's bilateral. It's the same up as it is down. Unilateral, what do you think that is? Yeah, it's or it's different. different in both directions. So now it might be 1.001 1 plus 0 0.004 minus 0 0.006 or 1.005 plus zero min minus point oh one oh or point nine nine five plus point oh one oh minus zero. Are those all the same tolerance? Do they have the same limits on all of those? If we, if we calculated the limits from them, would they all come out to that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah right? But they're all different, right? So what we're doing here is we're telling them which number we want them to aim for and then how much they can be off from that. So if we want them to aim for the small size, we can put this one. They just I know that if they make it any smaller than that, it's scrap. I mean, if it's a hole, they can drill it out, right? But if it's the shaft, if they make it smaller, then it's a scrap. Same thing here. Tell them, trying to get towards the biggest size, they've got to be real careful because there's no tolerance on the bigger. Here we're shooting right for the middle. Here we're shooting just a little above the middle. And so it could be every point in between could be a unilateral. And it kind of depends on what the design intent of it is. <clears throat> and then what do you think a single limit one is? One yeah, only one direction. So maybe like R.05 maps. You don't care what it is as long as it's a maximum of this dimension. Um, so if you're having them do some machining and you've got some fillets where you want them to make sure that there's a fillet there, but you don't want it to be a real big fillet, you can put that in. Or for the size of a weld, you, just, you want it to be a maximum of this or a minimum of this. So then you can put the max or the minimum number on it. So usually that's for fillets and stuff like small things like that, kind of finishing details. <clears throat> Any questions? <clears throat> so when we dimension, remember we talked to yes last week about dimension this way. Which, what's this called when you dimension end to end? Chain dimensioning. Remember, it's chain is in the end. What was this one called? What? No. What was this called? It's right there, huh? Yeah. <laughs> 
supposed to know this. And I said it twice last week. It's baseline. We have, we have one dimension that we're using as a base for all the lines, right? It's the baseline. <coughs> so here, this is kind of what happens if you don't put a tolerance on it. This happens by default. Everything has the same tolerances. And so on this part, the overall length is between 3 and 2.985. What's the overall length on this one? What's the tolerance on that? Yeah, because it's really, and then what's it on the small sides? No, it's not 995. Because that's 995 plus 995 plus 995. Yeah, it's 2.985. Because when we add all of those together, Oh, yeah, whatever. Okay, that makes sense. Sorry. Yeah, so it's 0.995 plus 0.9. So you have to add up all the small sizes for that. So now the, the entire thing can have a lot more variation than over here. But what about this segment right here? On this one, this segment right here is that, right? On this one, the segment can be from 0.985 to 2. You subtract 0.9 Yeah. Oh. Because it can be either on the, both on the small size, both on the big size, or one on the small size, one on the big size, or this one on the big and that one on the small, right? What? So, they could both be on small size, right? They could both be, that could be, that measurement could be 0.985 and this measurement could be 1.995, right? So to find that one, we subtract 1.995 from that. What? So for that one right there, for in the middle, how would we get that just by itself? So, what would want to, because it could be, if they, were, if they were both on the small size, then you wouldn't have to, then it'd be, it'd be this, same, but it could be one small and one big, right? So in, in that case, now this this, this measurement could be two point, or it could be one point zero zero five, right? Because okay. it'd be the two minus that, so it'd be point zero zero five, or one point zero zero five, right? Yeah. So it could actually be bigger than this one over here, or it could be this one on this big size and this one on the small size. So now we're back to the 0.995. So there's a lot more. This we can go from 0.995 to 1.005. So it has more variation in size than this one. So that's why kind of when you're doing things, if they're, if they're related to each other like holes, you know those two holes are going to be related to each other to, on another part. Better do it this way. But if it's not, then it's better to do it this way. And so that's where again I have to figure out, okay, how do I want the tolerances to affect each other as I'm putting these dimensions in? So so as a, an understanding thing to to see why we do certain dimensions in some ways and certain dimensions in other ways. Or why the engineer might say, no, I want it here, not over here. Even though it might look like it might fit better one way. You, you try to figure out the tolerance at the end of drawing the, the part, right? Yeah. That way you can see how it sort of fits the part. Yeah. So this would be in, taking into account. And this is something that the engineer is usually going to take care of is calculating, calculating tolerances. But if you're doing something on your own, you have to take that into account also. Okay? So that's kind of the same thing we just did. Um, so we have two parts. We have different fits between those two parts. So we have 
what's called a clearance fit, where when you do them, you have space between them. So when you figure out the tolerances, there's some space between them, the, between the small size of one and the biggest size of the other, you've got space. That's a clearance fit. So that's most things we want to do, right? Most things we want to have some space between them so they don't fit together. An interference fit is when the hole is smaller than the shaft. Why? How does that work? So you have room for no, what? So you have room to adjust. No, just here you got room to adjust because the shaft is smaller, so we can move around a little bit in there. Here, the hole is smaller than the shaft. It's not going to fit in. Why would you want to design something so they don't fit together? So they don't move. What? Well, so, so it doesn't move. Can you still get stuff that doesn't fit together together? Yeah. What's it take? Pressure. Pressure. Force. So that's also called a force fit. Um, or you heat the hole up so it expands, and you cool down the shaft so it shrinks, then you can put them together. Then we get return to normal temperature, they're, they're locked together. Or you just press them together, depending on how how much the interference is. If the interference is only a couple thousands, you can press them together. Or if it's only a couple ten thousandths, so we're out in the, the fourth or fifth decimal place, you can push them together. If it's getting to, to a bigger interference, then you have to worry about heating and, and stuff. So that's how they put the train tires on the train wheels. Train. They, yeah, they have tires. They have the wheel, and then they have a, a tire, which is another piece of metal that goes around the wheel, and they heat that up so it expands. They put over the wheel, and it shrinks back down on it. You have what? You have yeah, I see that. Okay, I'll, I'll find that video later. See if I can, I'll see if I can find it. I've been trying to find it on YouTube, but I can't get it. Wasn't that one of the hot things we watched? I don't think we watched that one. On the Did we? Yeah, because it was part of the heat. Yeah, I'll look for it. It, it might have been part of that one. And then we have transition fits, which can be either clearance or interference, depending on where it is. So the sizes kind of overlap. Um, and I've got a chart on the next page that'll kind of show this. And then we have line fits where it's exact same size. So like um, on a line fit, it might be nine nine five. So that's the, the hole size, and the shaft size would be so the one number is in common. So the smallest of one is the same as the biggest number on the other one. That's a line fit. So at the worst case scenario, it's a perfect perfect fit between them. But then other than that, it's a clearance fit. So I'm just going to give you the names of them. So for ANSI, that's American National Standards Institute. They have the running the sliding fit, which is an RC fit. Um, they have the locational, which is our transition fits, which are the or these are the, the closer ones. So we have the locational clearance. Locational transition, locational force, and then we have the force fits, um, which are tight fits. So those are the FNs. So if you see a fit called out as an RC, that's what it is. Um, so, so here's a so an RC, RC one, RC two. So an RC1 is like things that um, over 600 RPM. RC2 is things that are under 600 RPM for how fast they're turning. If they're, if they're spinning faster, they need a little bit more space. So you give them a wider tolerance. Um, back to that. Um, on the ISO, 
you give it the, the basic size, or the basic size, the basic size, and then the tolerance and fit. And so you can call it just a 50H8 or 50F7. So that's millimeters. What? Or you can do both at once. So if you're talking about the whole, so when the whole is like uppercase letter, the shaft is the lowercase letter, or you can give just the, the fit all together. Um, so I have some of those here. Why is that, why is that letter lowercase? Because that's the shaft. That's just the way that it is. The uppercase means the whole, lowercase means the shaft. Is that lowercase letter well, in AutoCAD, in that font. Okay. Yep. So this is that's the only time you use a lowercase letter in a drawing. So, like that, the diameter is 0.1875, H7. So the tolerance is plus 5 ten thousandths minus 0. So for, the, for an H7, that's the tolerance for that size. So it's based on the size. So as things get bigger, the tolerance changes. It gets bigger also. And if you want to come up and see this later, that's for this little handle, and it has some, some pieces that are press fit into it. Um, you can kind of see on the assemblies. I'll we'll talk about working drawings next week, which is what all this is. But you'll see that on the parts it goes with. Now this part has a, a P6 rating. The same, the same size, but, but a different rating. So you can go up and look at this later if you want to see it in detail. And so what those numbers are referring to, and this is that chart I said I'd give you, or let you see. So H7 is here. The H means that it's right at the basic size. And so in the whole system, the hole is always at the basic size, and then its tolerance gets bigger from there. So its minimum size is whatever the basic is, and then it gets bigger. And the number it says how wide the, the tolerance range is. Then the, the shaft size, the letter determines how far apart it is. And the number still determines how big the range is. <coughs> so, so like in H7, H6, it's got a line fit. And the, the hole can get bigger and the shaft can get smaller. A, a G, an F. D or whatever. Going this way down the alphabet, you're getting clearance fits. Here, what kind of fit is that? I'll look at the top. What kind of fit is that? An uh, H7 K6. What? Um, let me up a little bit. So right here is H7 K6. What kind of a fit is that? Is that a clearance fit, a transition fit, or a forest fit? Transition. Transition, why? Because so it could be a clearance, right? If the hole was here and the shaft was here, they got space between them, right? It's the clearance fit. If the hole was here, the shaft was there, then it'd be a press fit, right? So it could be either one, so it's a transition. Same with this one, that's a transition. They've got some overlap. Then these are the press fits. So here we got a line fit again, but a line that's a press fit. That one's a press fit because now the shaft is definitely bigger than the hole is. 
the same thing over here. The shaft is bigger than the hole. So those are all press fits or interference fits. Okay. Seven is like the standard. Yeah. So and we'll talk about it. And then a couple slides I have what makes that number happen. So there's that. And you can see that an RC1 is the same as an H5 G4. So relating the, the ANSI standard back to the ISO standard. Anyone know what ISO stands for? No, I skipped that. <clears throat> ISO is International Standards Organization. So that's, if you're doing something that's going to be made out of the country, you should be using ISO probably. ANSI is basically anything in the US, ISO, anything that goes outside. Okay, I kind of have to know both now. And some companies that do business only in the U.S. use ISO standards for their drawings. Are ISO standards more strict than ANSI? They're just different. And some things are easier. Because in ANSI, you, can't, you usually don't just put RC1. You actually have to put what the dimensions are. Um, yeah? Don't they have mill standards? That's more included in the, into the ANSI. Um, but yeah, the military has their own standards also for some things. So if you're doing mill spec stuff, you have to use that. Um, sometimes some military stuff uses an ISO standards. So it kind of depends on what you're doing. Um, but if it was, uh, if you're using ANSI, and you can mix them. So like on this, the, most of this stuff is ANSI standards, but I use tolerances using the ISO standard. Because if you're, like here, the, the CAD program knows what the tolerance numbers are and put them in for me. <clears throat> and so, yeah, but if I was doing this by hand, I wouldn't have to know that. If I knew I wanted it to be H8, F7, I'd just write that on the drawing. H8, F7. And then the machinist knows what the tolerance is based on that. Under ANSI standard, you're just supposed to put in what the actual tolerance is. And so you'd actually put in the limits or, or use your... Um, use one of the limits or the symmetric or deviation to specify what those tolerances are. You wouldn't just say RC1. So that kind of, so using the, the, the whole system, that's kind of where the H was, the, the basic size is always part of the hole, and then the, the shaft is different. So this is where that'd be the no, a nominal half inch, where that's the basic size of half inch, okay? And they also have the shaft system where now the shaft gets the basic size. So it depends on what you're doing. If it's easier to machine the shaft down to a smaller size, then you use the whole system. If it's easier to machine the hole around the shaft, because the shaft is the hardest thing to get to, then you use the shaft system. But most of the time we use the hole. Um, so I kind of got that out of order. So the letters, so the, remember the H and the F and, and all those? <clears throat> That's depending on the type of fit we have. So this is using the shaft system, or the, the hole system. So the shaft would be one of these based on what it is. So the hole is going to be an H, and the shaft, if it's an A, through a C, that's for positional fit, uh, and it's got slack running fits, and F, things that need to be grease or oil lubricated, bearings, um, medium to tight mechanisms, um, H, location fit, non-running parts or non-moving parts. Um, K, slide interference, like keys. Uh, Interference, so the light press, medium press, permanent press um, for, for ferrous metals. T through Z for special applications, not usually done. So that tells you what kind of a tolerance you're going to use, so the space in between them. And then for the actual width of the tolerance, that, remember that was the number? And that's based on how it's made. So if you're doing sand casting, it's going to be a 16. So if the part is sand cast, it's going to have a bigger tolerance range because you can't really control with sand cast. 
but if you're going to be doing um, like drilling, that's an 11, milling is a 10, um, you're doing a lay of the work, it's an 8, uh, grinding it's a 6, and then 5 and lower, that's real high precision stuff, like ball bearings and using gap gauges and slip lock, like all the real perfect stuff. That's these. And actually, after we're done, I'll, I'll get out some gauge blocks so you can see how perfect those are. <clears throat> so kind of the height the, of the, the range is dependent on the process you use to make it. And the position is based on how what you want the fit to be. And then the surface finish is also based on, the, so the surface finish is this little check mark, mark thing. It has a number on it. And I'll get out a surface, gauge, surface finish gauge for you to look at to see what the difference is between a 125 and a 16. And then that's the range on my gauge. So depending on what, and that's in micro inches. Um, so kind of flame cutting is in that range. When you get down into into polishing, then you're getting down to the two micro inches for for the the whole height of there. So that so that might be on a drawing too, uh, just in case you see that. And then they'll say it on the title block also. So like on this one, on my title block it says surface finish of 125. So the surface finish in here. So it wants it to be pretty smooth, not big gouges or anything. We're not real rough. So, what is the dash? That's just that's just the range of of what that is. That's just because they didn't want to put a bunch of X's with no line. If you look, the lines are all kind of close to the same. I don't know why. The reason is they use something. Maybe. So, all right, uh, let's go over to the, the thing.